Hi everyone, it's me again. This week my tutorial is on achieving a teapot or a sit spin position. They are very similar, they can even look almost the same. There is a difference in technique in how you get into that position, obviously with a spin you've got your three turn coming round and you've got to manoeuvre into your position as you lower, as you enter the turn, as you approach the three turn and you enter the spin, whereas you've got a bit more time with the teapot. Okay, but in order to be able to hold the sit or hold the teapot or a hydroglide also, which is kind of a more advanced variation of a teapot, you essentially need to focus on the same strength and flexibility type exercises. So that is the purpose of today. Now, one of the most common things that happens when people are struggling with a teapot or a sit spin is they haven't actually got knee control. So you find that they dip down and the knee tends to drop inside of the supporting foot, whichever leg they're on, and they kind of collapse off of it. So the first thing you want to think about is how to develop the tracking and the strength in the knee. So we start off with just little tiny bends, not even full squats, just really focusing on knees going over toes. This is the same as with most skating things. Okay, we don't, you know, we, we align we stay over our supporting foot then we can start to take it down to proper squats okay and repetitions three sets of ten something like that is a good warm-up before you skate in general okay but the key thing is it's slow controlled and everything is aligned knees shins ankles toes okay we're going to try to get our chin over our knees here okay so this is essentially where we're going to be to achieve our teapot so a little bit body forward pushing the bum back okay chin over knees center of the foot okay bottom back nice 90 degree position okay when we go to a sit spin it is that 90 degrees we have to achieve if you can get lower fantastic but this is your minimum for it to be counted or to be called okay anything higher is transitional and won't be accepted as a sit position. You're going to really feel this in your quads, that is important for building that up. So we start off with the feet apart as a traditional squat and then we're going to try some squats with the knees together. Now this is uncommon, this is not something that you particularly see done in the gym, but this is how we need to be balanced for our sit, okay, or for our teapot. We're not going to try to enter our teapot with our legs apart because we're going to fall off a bit. They need to be underneath this, same as with in general, skating, we need to be over the blade, stacked over the foot. So same thing, 90 degrees, chin over the knees or fall, even forward of it, arms stretched out, and that's something else to practice. It's quite often useful to grip the arms, cross them. There's lots of variations of what you can achieve, but to start off with, when you first learn to sit spin, reach and hold there. Okay and try to not let this shift so we're dropping the position and coming up slowly try not to move too quick the resistance a slower movement is going to build it stronger we can do some one foot knee bends again this is good just in general ribs in hips under down and up focusing on your tracking knee over toe knee over toe work into the quads there start to dip down and I put my foot down there, dip down a little lower, dip down a little lower, okay out of it. Even if you're just trying to get it on one side, okay so you're thinking of mm, safer sit spin, you're, you spin the traditional way around and you're just trying to get your forward set on your normal side. Although that's on the left foot, still work the right leg because obviously you are going to go for doing back sits, it's good to be able to teapot in both directions. Um, my little party trick, I can sit spin both ways around and then do a forward tilt on both sides, which is worth extra points in competition, particularly like on the dance side of things, possibly in free. Okay, um, so that's one footed squats, starting small and then going down to the bigger ones. Uh, so, and of course, actually things like lunges 
as well. Get into that 90 degrees with the quad. And engaging the core. Okay, will help and will just generally strengthen you for skating, so it's always a good thing. And you're practicing lowering and rising with control of the upper body, so this is not moving. And core strength is always good. Next thing, calf raises. Something else that this is a bit of a flexibility issue. Some people find that their Achilles can stop them being able to they go down and they can't seem to keep, lift the leg without their heel coming up, so they've got to the toe. So we've got to learn to lengthen and strengthen. Okay, so I'll give you some calf stretches, but also we need to calf strengthen. So we can just do down and up little rises. You can be holding on there, nice and slow lower. And then you can get and push the heels down, rise up, strengthen the calf, lower. You can do that in centre to practice your balance as well. Okay, hips in, hips under, get your corset on. Okay, so that's going to help strengthen the calves. Sorry. If, um, I'll come to stretching the calves in a, in a sec and it's going to use a resistance band if you have one. We'll do that in a minute. Next thing, um, hamstring flexibility. Okay, uh, some people can't, they get there and it just, they find it pulling the back of the hamstring as they go down and they just haven't got the flexibility and this also goes into the Achilles stretch at the bottom. So first things first, nice easy one, roll down one vertebrae at a time, hang at the bottom, you can have a little bit of a bend in the knee and you should just feel it stretching out. You can roll back up. Engage in the tummy, you're getting that little bit of a crunch there through your abs as well. Roll back up. One vertebrae at a time, reaching down. And back up, and that's just a nice easy warm up. And of course, you can do that. <laughs> Sat down, body up, pulling out as if you've got your puppet and string. Reaching forward, keeping the back straight. And leaning over. The point and try not to hunch, try to reach, even if you only get to like here, and then you can really feel that stretching there. This should be completed after a workout or a skating session and exercise when you're warm because this is static stretching now, so you don't want to do this cold and you're lengthening away, reaching beyond your toes if you can. Roll up slowly, hold in for 20 to 30 seconds. Um, to continue with stretching out your hamstrings, we can do a bit of a, a lunge and then a seated runner's lunge. Roll forward, that's going to get into your hip flexors. Hip flexors is also an area that can be a problem with sit, um, sit spins and teapots. So there you go, a little bit of a hip forward hip flexor stretch that's going to help you get that. A lot of these stretches I've done on other videos as well because actually we keep using a lot of the same muscle groups on the ice. So stretch out your hip flexors and then set, stretch out your hamstring. Same thing. Knee over ankle, rock forward, body up strong and straight, reach, level hips, rock back, hamstring, level hips, and rock back. Reach, hold, forward, fold. Um, we can now do a little bit we're gonna look at working into these hip flexors and we need to roll into back and tuck into a ball and just hold in and we're practicing bringing the um the quad into the body so we're getting quite a tight lean good for variations on six months but also good for increasing that range of motion through the hip there then bring the foot up okay into the air flexed and replicate essentially if you bring it towards the body a really deep sit position that's your 90 your basic sit spin and that's going to be an even deep one you can start to pull that in okay static stretching six fingers away so 90 pull it in a little bit tighter get up and that's a seated version of your sit in the back 
with your hug. You can also flex, uh, point and flex to lengthen out your Achilles there. And then shorten them, reach into the hamstring, you can do them in. Lengthen the Achilles, hamstring, point and flex. And that, that can, same concept can be done seated, good toes and moist toes and you can really feel it down the calves, down the Achilles, very important. Okay, um, next one, an American split. So what this means is we stretch one leg out, it's similar to the runner's lunge, we're just going to turn that out to 90 at the back, so we open up our hip flexors, this is more open than your sit would be, but you can reach forward and lean over, put your foot there, again the hamstring stretch, square off your hips, okay, flex the foot, point the foot, flex the foot, hamstrings, and Achilles, okay, flex, lean over, back, flex, and point, flex, and point, and we're articulating the foot, which is always good for improving that point, so, which we want in any, anyway, we flex, so it's giving us movement there. Um, I'm just looking at my list to remind me of what I'm doing. Okay, uh, good calf stretch, a nice one just to do if you're feeling a bit tight anyway. Feet flat on the floor if you can, hips forward, ribs and hips under, bend the knee, it's a little bit of a lunge, and you can just feel that stretching out the calf at the back. If you've done lots of calf raises, those strengthen the calf, but they make it very tight, so you should always do this, following those. Okay, hold it, square off, nice and simple. Okay, this just for me is something that feels really, really good. Versus opens up, I get quite tight calves anyway. So I find this really useful. And you can see my foot's in a flex position at the back, which is like generally when you start thinking of it. Although I do actually really like pointy toe, but it's more complicated <laughs> um, and something to work towards. Another one for your calf, just bring your foot in front. Very typical one. Shoulders. Now here we can practice the chin over the knee, so it's kind of a semi, it's working towards that sit swim position anyway. You're pushing the glute back, so you're getting into your glutes there, which we need. I'm gonna show you some glute stuff in a sec, which is gonna help. Okay, so this is like almost prep in the sit spin. Nice and square, keeping your body forward. That's important in your sit as well. You don't wanna be off center, pushing the glute back. Flexing the foot at the front to really get into the calf. Okay, again, hold in for 20, well, 30 seconds ish after exercise. Um, if you have one of these, these are fantastic, or a traditional resistance band, whichever way. And again, this is a you can wrap it around your foot and then flex and point to and pull on it. You can get a bit of an arm workout here as well but you can articulate your foot and pull it in and you feel that uh, stretch your calf on the side, obviously do both, even if you have one side better than the other, focus on the tight side, but make sure you do work both nice and slow. You can even put the band around uh, both feet and do it at the same time. And you can do it on the back just the same. So it's basically the exercise we did before, but the variation with the resistance band. And yeah, as I said, you can have these where you, rather than, this is obviously a full circle, this band, full loop, but some people might just have the standard bands that are almost just like a piece of material. So you could do it, as I said, you have done my nuts, that's a lot stronger. Well, um, yeah, that, that's a lot harder. Resistance bands are really cheap. Um, you can get them from sports shops, supermarkets even. This one came from the supermarket, could not be known. Um, off the internet, physios, really, really cheap, but great off course training thing to have at home. So, that's remembering. Um, piriformis stretch. So something, quads, uh, not quads, glutes. So, Glute bridges, always good. Squeeze up, tuck your bottom in, engage your core. Okay, we do need strong glutes to help support us. 
hold that up and then this was good bend and up down that's tucking its prep in that so there use so again we're getting the hamstring we're getting with the flex and point we're getting the achilles we're getting the calf and we're getting the glute there which you need for your sit or your heel pop so these will strengthen keeping the hips level the shoulders back okay next one is a little stretch for the glute you're gonna go you're on your uh back lift one knee up and cross the ankle over the opposite knee turn fit out so we're going to turn out and we're going to get find it's coming into here so we're getting almost like a tucked position and then we can pull our hamstring of the other foot into the body and there is almost like a tucked um sit sort of position you're stretching out your glutes and giving a bit more flexibility there and practicing that the more you pull it in the more it replicates your foot nice and strong and hold it for 20 30 so flat cross it over rotate out so at 90 degrees um you can push it back to check lift it up to at least 90 and then pull it in and you get your piriform stretch and you're also getting your you get a bit in the hips getting a bit in the glutes hamstring yeah great one and that can be also done to practice a tuck position which is actually me a more advanced variation but some people kind of get there first you can do this standing balancing really good balance test quite difficult you need to get at least 90 and you can again we've got the the turn up here fully turned out it's difficult stood up okay much easier on the ice um at least 90 down so that it get nice and low you might want to hold on to something i to when you start out with this Push the bottom back nice and low and push down with your elbow and feel that turn out and the strengthening. It's a bit like one in squat. And again, sit there and practice. Hold in here. Um, okay, so now moving on to actual getting your teapot position. Something, the first thing is to try on the floor. Now, I've got some kettlebells. You don't need kettlebells. I just couldn't think of anything else to use at home to demonstrate this. If you've got children's toys like cones, if you've got cones, I'd use those on the ice. It doesn't need to be heavy. It's something you can lean on. It can be two boards and blocks, anything. But literally just practice sitting down, tucking in, and then First off, we do it without holding on. So we're not actually, I'm still fully seated on the floor. Okay, I've just got the be lifting up here. You can lift and rise, keeping my hands in front of me. Another common thing people do is they sit too far back and fall over. So the arms are in front and that's where we're gonna get the chin in front of the hips. Okay, so we're just practicing that position on the floor. Sitting up with my point and flex. And then with your thing you're holding on to, you can, they not actually on the floor. Um, you can start to rock forward and find that. So you'll begin to practice the position, but you're using those for balance. That's all they're there for. It's got nothing to do with the weight and anything that is strong enough to hold you up will count. Okay, they should be in front of the body. So if they're out here, that's not terribly useful because you're just to pull on the ice they're in front of the body. And then you can get your balance and then see if you can take them away and hold into your really deep teapot spot. Now, I've probably jumped one step further than I should. I wanna talk about the dip. <laughs> so we've done those um, squats at the beginning and we did them with the feet together. I want you to practice a little mind. So we bend, we go through that squat with the bottom push back and then we lean forward. The arms are in front of us, they're clasped and we tuck the bottom behind the legs. Can you see how deep that bend is? Is that something that again is ankle flexibility and strength? So that's our basic position. Now, people sometimes hunch. Try to straighten your back. So although my chin is forward of my um, 
Reaching forward. Okay. At least over the knees or ideally beyond. Okay. My hips are back. Uh, shoulders are here and on the hips. My back is straight. Try not to hunch there because you become floppy. This is where your core is engaged. Okay, that strong straight back is core engaged. So chin um, in front of, I think it's in front of your hips. Obviously it is a long one in front of your hips, but chin in front of knees here, or at least over them. So we're reaching forward, stay through the center of the foot and you're practicing that little man. And then rising up without any support. And then you can go and try that again. Forward, go through to your little man. Keep it there, chin, at least over knees, and you can get your balance, and then you can come up. So that's begin to build that teapot position. Okay, I thought this was gonna be a short one, so it's not. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, arms held in front. Later on, you can start to do pretty things and reach and twist, but for now, it comes in. And when you come into your sit, you're clasping to there because it brings that side round as you enter the spin and it meets. And then I get my elbow pushed back. Okay. Um, okay, last thing is to actually start to try the teapot itself. So we've done lots of squats, we've practiced the arms, we've practiced uh, we've stretched our glutes and hamstrings and all those and Achilles. It's now to really focus on doing this. Take it slow. You can start off holding on. So practicing going down in the position as low as you can, holding it, holding it, holding it, leaning forward. Try not to cling onto this, but just have it there as support and start slow. Slow is really hard, but slow is about control. We're thinking about knees over the toes. We're thinking about that position. There's our 90. If you can dip below, it's actually easier to stay. It's less hard on your quads, but you've got to be strong with your core so you stay balanced. My back's straight, but I'm still getting reaching my chin forward. And as you come back up, you recover knees over toes. You can try this perched on. I shouldn't really be on the sofa, but you can try it, go down to the sofa and reach on the sofa and practice. So you just the chair so that you're beginning to get the position that you've got that as a little bit of extra support and guidance to begin with. That's what I'm doing. Next thing is to try it on its own. Weight over the centre of the foot. So that's kind of obviously when you spin you're on the ball of the foot, but thinking of the teapot first, because you're gonna probably get that first before you move on to the centre of the blade. So equally nice and secure at the arches. I like to find the middle of my toes. Shoulders forward and in front, and as I bend, okay, knee over toe, balance. There's 90, there's dipping below, I'm tucking my bottom in, and I can hold nice and strong, keeping my shoulders as level as possible, and coming up, recovering, and again, maintaining that tracking. So I'll just show you on the other side. Engage core, reaching forward, reach my chin to my knee, further forward if you need to. Okay, and then I can get the body up. And then the more the body comes up, the nicer position looks, particularly when you look at um, people's sit spins. If they're like really hunched over, the is not gonna be as good. If you're struggling to get your weight forward, another trick. Again, <laughs> you don't need to use a, a, um, a weighted ball, a normal light one, um, just anything, something to hold in front of you can be a good way, because if you're holding it out, it's keeping your weight forward, okay? Because you can't bring it behind you. So that's a good little trick. And then put, and you can go down in front of you, holding it out, and it helps to get, uh, find that position, okay? And then, when you're feeling really confident, and you've got your sit position, you wanna improve your balance, to play. Okay, you know I'm an advocate of the balance board. Well, of course, you can do all of this on the balance board too. And then you can even start to play with your, with 
position of your free leg. So centre, um, arch over the centre of the board, in front, tracking down nice and evenly. The other thing I should say is the thighs should be nice and close. So if you go out to the side, these are variations, but they are harder. So when you're starting out, nice and close to the side. On that, my friends, is your how to do a teapot, uh, how to get your teapot tutorial and your system. All right, everyone, bye-bye, well done.